Now with the dozens, if not hundreds of new watches unveiled at Watches and Wonders this year, and we're working on a wrap up video of all the new releases for an overview soon, I think Tudor's releases were some of the most hotly anticipated. In total, we witnessed tasteful updates to the 1926 family, as well as the non-diving Black Bays and changes to the Black Bay 58, including a few new dial colors and some unexpected cases in silver and in gold. However, the buzz seemed to be peaked with the new Black Bay Chronos, renewed with a slew of thoughtful updates throughout, including a striking new pair of dials, both in a Panda and reverse Panda configuration. So we were actually fortunate to get these watches right at launch. So I've had some time over the last several days to actually you know, really get an idea of what they're all about. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is going in depth about both of these new two watches. Also kind of sharing where they sit within the Black Bay family and ultimately who are these watches for? But let's jump into it. All right, guys, now before we jump into this video, I do want to mention we do have a giveaway going on. So if you do want to enter, get a free watch up to $1,500 from teddybaldestar.com, fill out the form in the description down below. We'll have all the details there. Make sure to follow the instructions and good luck to all of you that enter. Starting with a bit of background here. So the Black Bay Chrono was originally unveiled at Baselworld in 2017, and it really built upon a mix between Tudor's heritage with some racing undertones, as well as that Black Bay diving DNA, and was powered by a manufacturer caliber MT5813, a Tudor modified Breitling B01 as a result of Tudor and Breitling exchanging some technologies with the retail price around five grand. That all made the Black Bay Chrono quickly emerge as one of the best looking and most capable options for a luxury chronograph with a leading chronograph movement in the price range, with the family expanding to include also popular the s and models. For this year's Watches and Wonders though, there was a lot of predictions on what was gonna be next for Tudor, but I think it's fair to say the new Tudor Black Bay Chronos were a bit out of left field, and I don't think many people were looking in that direction. But following their arrival, these managed to garner up quite a bit of buzz, if not the most buzz, fusing much of the original value proposition with some mass appealing updates, that led to these becoming stars of a very busy week of releases. So to begin here, I think it's important to look at the specifications from a high level. And I just wanna note that measure these out very carefully with digital calibers. I wanted to be sure with the sizing. Now first with the reference here, we have the 79360 for the model family with prices starting at $4,900 for it on a bun strap as well as a fabric strap and then 5225 on a bracelet. Case size is 41 millimeters, thickness of 14.2 millimeters, lug to lug just shy of 50 millimeters at 49.8 millimeters, lug width of 22 millimeters, have 200 meters of water resistance on this one. As mentioned with the movement, automatic Tudor MT5813 and crystal sapphire. So the immediate attribute that I noticed when handling these watches and putting them on was Tudor definitely made some adjustments in regards to their wear. Whether we're talking about the original Black Bay Chrono, the Black Bay 41s, or the Black Bay GMT, one of the common points of criticism has been the thickness with all of them being roughly 15 millimeters in height. So with these releases, Tudor definitely kept this in mind and re-engineered the construction, changing the movement's position by moving the dial closer to the crystal in order to facilitate a now slimmer build of 14.2 millimeters based on my measurements, over a half a millimeter thinner than the previous variants, as well as being thinner than the traditional three-hander Black Bay 41s with the MT5602 inside. And while a half millimeter doesn't jump out as a huge update, it is very noticeable when you actually put this thing on as the vertical polished flanks of the case are a bit less prominent with the watch resting on the wrist and just is more compact overall. As a lot of people will say, it has kind of more of that slabbed off side. In this case, significantly less prominent here. So in terms of just regular expectation on these, these are still relatively larger watches with some presence, but the work they did in bringing down the thickness on a chronograph, which are notorious for being a bit arduous to work with given the movement thickness being larger, but this one measuring at 7.23 millimeters in thickness, it is a very nice step forward, making this one a great wear for those that I would say probably are more to the medium to larger size wrist family. Yet even on my small wrist, I think this thing can work. And I was actually surprised and definitely like the improvements that were being made here in terms of the wearability. 
coating. When it comes to case finishing, we have a familiar and tasteful satin finish on the anterior side of the case with a polished bevel along the lugs leading into a polished side of the case overall. With a predominantly satin case when looking straight on with subtle flashes of polishing along the edge, the watch feels refined while not being overly extravagant as much of the tool watch undertones that just recall back to Tudor's roots are certainly here. Since this is a Black Bay Chrono after all, we do have 200 meters of water resistance, which is nice, with these featuring screw down chronograph pushers in their traditional layout and a signed screw down crown with that Tudor rose set between them at the three. Between the lugs, we have a 22 millimeter lug width being available both on a bracelet for a $300 premium and a bun strap or a Tudor fabric strap being at that $4,900 price point. Since both examples I have here are gonna be on the bracelet, I will speak to that mostly and just say, it is well made. The three link riveted style is familiar for the Black Bay family, features screwed in links and meeting at a fold over locking class at the underside, offering three points of micro adjustment within that class. Simply put, Tudor produces some of the best bracelets for the money in the industry. And I think the $300 upcharge for the bracelet, if you like the looks of it, is I think a no brainer if you want this watch. To mark some additional changes, we also have to look at the general design as well, looking at the dial as well as that outer bezel. So glancing straight on on, we have one of the most prominent visual changes compared to the older model with a fixed stainless steel bezel now being instead here with an anodized aluminum bezel with a tachometer scale. Moving inwards from the new bezel, we also have a significantly domed sapphire crystal aiding in the classic appeal of these pieces, strongly resembling those old school acrylic crystals, but does offer a clean view of the dial elements apart from some distortion of the outer markers at certain angles given its heavily domed appearance. Where the previous Black Bay Chrono offered a more utilitarian appearance with less pronounced use of color and the aforementioned engraved steel bezel, this updated dial design takes a stronger, more vibrant stance in terms of its style, blending the Black Bay Chrono design with a much bigger helping of some vintage inspiration. So the obvious affiliation people are going to be making when looking at these is comparing these to the Paul Newman references, but given the different register display, the snowflake handset, and different markers, it's not as much of an apples to apples comparison as there really is a lot of Black Bay DNA in this piece, but certainly can see some resemblance there. Now the down surfaces come in either a muted black surface or a silverish opaline color that will turn to a more pronounced white in direct light, marking some other details of the dial at the outskirts, a traditional minute track with applied superluminova filled markers shining with great incandescence, the Tudor shield at the 12, a date window at the six and a stepped outline and a two register display set horizontally across the dial with a nine o'clock register denoting the running 60 seconds and the three o'clock register uh, featuring a 45 minute counter compared to the traditional 30 minute counter found in many Breitlings using the B01 movement, uh, for example, in the Premier B01. Now the registers are also deeply recessed into the dial with a fine circular finish or texture, helping further accentuate the contrast of the registers from the rest of the dial surface. As a couple final notes about these two dials in the area of legibility, the black dial is ahead in the area, just given the more drastic contrast with the handset compared to the silver. And the other point is that the large snowflake hand, as much as I love the snowflake hand, can obstruct some of the view of the registers, making it a bit harder to time events during specific short periods of the day. Bit of a side note, but important one to bring up if you really are going to kind of take this one through its paces as a chronograph. Yet overall, when offering a Panda style configuration nowadays, it's pretty much bound to be a winner. And when pairing it with the Black Bay architecture, definitely a winning formula for mass market appeal. So as mentioned, one of the leading traits of the original Black Bay Chronos was their adoption of using a B01 as the base caliber from Breitling, an exchange that was beneficial for both brands as select Super Oceans in turn housed the MT5612 from Tudor. And despite being hidden from view in these two models with the modified MT5813, you have one of the best chronograph movements you're going to find on the market for under 10K. To provide reason for this claim, the MT5813 comes paired with a vertical clutch and also a column wheel, offering a snappy response to the chrono engagement with a suitable tactile feedback. Now the movement also comes with a free sprung balance and gets a silicon balance spring in this instance, which will assist in both resistance against shock and resistance against magnetism in order to have really unimpeded oscillation. In addition for an outwardly facing change, as mentioned a little bit earlier, the counter seen on the front of the dial at the three o'clock position does have a 45 minute display as opposed to the 30 minute display. But perhaps more importantly, the MT5813 provides 70 hours of power reserve, offering a real over the weekend lifespan while still beating away at the Swiss standard 
of 28,800 vibrations per hour or four Hertz and being a COSC certified caliber. However, Tudor rates these to outperform that standard. So typical deviation there is minus four to plus six seconds a day, but Tudor is delivering these at the spec of minus two to plus four seconds a day in accuracy. Now, when anticipating the watches for Tudor this year and what they were gonna unveil, a new Black Bay chronograph was not exactly what I was expecting this year from the brand. With the takeovers of the 58s and the GMTs in recent years, as well as just getting some stiff competition from other chronos like the Heritage Chronos in their collection, there's a lot to really stand out from in their really busy catalog now. Yet with the launch of these last week, it seemed apparent to me that these were the stars of a very eventful week from Watches and Wonders, especially from Tudor. A design appeal that tastefully pulls from the past while also remaining pretty consistent to the Black Bay DNA. Inside, you're also getting a really solid chronograph movement, perhaps one of the best in the category with a nice power reserve, column wheel chronograph. And in terms of the wearability, sure, it is still gonna be probably best suited for medium to larger size wrists, but great strides are being made. I love the creativity and kind of working around the thickness of the movement to try to make this one more accommodating for, I would say, more people out there as the common criticism was always the thickness. To shade off half a millimeter here, I think is very noticeable and does help out the wearing experience very well. And when dealing with the Panda Style Chronograph from a brand like Tudor, all of those things, all these factors that I'm bringing up, I think just provides this to be a winning formula. And given the many releases at Watches and Wonders this past week, to really stand out, it's tough to do, but these stood out in a very busy crowd. And I think Tudor with these new Black Bay Chronos have another hit in their catalog. All right, guys, I'd love to see your thoughts on these new releases from Tudor, as well as out of all the releases that they had this year, which one is your favorite? Is it these, is it something else? Love to see comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon and do not forget to sign up for that giveaway. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna really announce the winner, but if you wanna stay up to date with it, be sure to follow on Instagram as well. And of course, be sure to be subscribed here as we'll make announcements in both places. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.